Hi, you folks. How you doing? It's James JT at the movies back here again for another video, and uh, again one outside the the sort of the norm for me. And uh, you're probably thinking, "Well, oh, God, all three of the videos you've done today, James, are uh, are outside of the norm." But this one's a competition entry. Uh, Tony over at Horror in Todd. She's a channel I've actually only just found about this week uh, through uh, John from Mondo Chevalic Movies. Um, he's running a competition on YouTube at the moment, talking about. What is your favourite horror movie to watch at Halloween and why? And and I thought about it, and I thought, Do you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna enter. So I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. But the film that I like to watch most Halloweens, if I can, and we actually we kept up to this last night, um, is Nightmare on Elm Street three, and um, it's my favourite of the franchises that one. And I'll explain why. In the first Nightmare on Elm Street, they're very much just trying to find their feet with what they want to do uh, and some of the characters feel a little underdeveloped to, to me and you know sort of some of the special effects uh, seem a bit cheesy um, and I know all of it's not really aged that well but um, in, in particular the bit where Freddy's walking down the, the alleyway and his arms are growing out like this and I find it laughable more than I do scary and then in part two they decided to flip the whole thing on its head and try something completely different with the male lead and sort of bringing Freddy into the real world and it and it didn't really work and so they sort of went back to the basics with part three and sort of carried on the story a few years later of what would have naturally happened next after after part one and and that's what I love about it we you know we, we meet a group of kids that are, that are in a mental hospital um, because the doctors and their families believe that they're having sort of like paranoid delusions and that they're scared to go to sleep because of, you know, a, a mental illness. But actually these poor kids are facing up against Freddy in their dreams and nobody believes them. That is until Nancy Thompson's assigned to the staff at the hospital and obviously all too soon realises what these kids are going through. She's able to, you know, bring on board the chief doctor um, and, and sort of bring him round to her way of thinking that actually Freddy is real and that the kids are really in danger in their dreams. And, and they all go on this journey together to be able to work together in their dreams to take on Freddy. And then quite separately to that, there's, there's sort of like a, a, another paranormal aspect going on. There's a, there's a nun, uh, Sister Mary Helena, that sort of shows up throughout the film to offer words of comfort or advice to the main doctor of the film, who's sort of almost a, a romantic interest for Nancy as well. And then it turns out at the end of the film that she's Freddy's mum and she's been helping guide them on the way to really put Freddy to bed once and for all and to, you know, to end the horror and the and the terror. And I just feel like the stakes are so much more. The setting of the hospital is a much creepier environment for the horror movie. I feel like they've upped the game with the special effects. And it's Chuck Russell and his team, the guys that went on to do The Mask, uh, that made this film with Wes Craven supervising them. And I really think that they just took all that was great about the first film and built on it. Heather Langdon Camp is really, really sort of settled into the role of Nancy uh, in this one. And, and it feels much more natural than it than it did in the first one. And I'm, I'm really not saying I don't like the first one. I absolutely love this series. It's my favourite horror series. But if I had to pick one out of it, it would be this one. I absolutely love this film. And it's a must to watch for me at Halloween. I find it really creepy. I find all the main leads really, really sort of uh, endearing characters. You root for them. They've had the troubles, they're trying to overcome the demons as well as fighting a literal demon in Freddy Krueger. Um, and then finally they get the support of Nancy who's able to win over the Doctor. And it, I, I just really love the movie. And, and I also, even though the sequels aren't that strong, I love the, the sort of the story arc that it then sets up for parts four and five. Um, I, I just can't rave about this movie enough as one of my favourite horror movies, if not my favourite horror movie. So there you are, Tony, and there you are, everyone else. That has been um, my favourite horror movie to watch at Halloween. Like I say, we watched it last night, along with the, the 2018 sort of sequel reboot to uh, to Halloween as well. That was our, our double bill. Ha Halloween was Laura's choice, my girlfriend. Uh, and what a great double bill of films that it was. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, 
Again, shout out to John, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, he's put me onto your channel, Tony, and I'm absolutely loving what I'm seeing. John, loving everything that I'm seeing on your channel as well, mate. Um, and really grateful for the support you've shown me over the last couple of weeks as well. Um, if I'm giving shout outs to other people in our movie community, Elliot Cohen um, is really the guy who sort of inspired me to uh, really take a proper go at it after discovering his channel. And uh, my good mate Phil Graham has recently just started uh, a YouTube account where he's going to be talking about films and collecting physical media quite a lot. So I want to give a shout out to Phil as well. I'll drop links to all these channels down below in the uh, in the description section as well. If you've liked this video and you want to see me talking about collecting physical media, reviewing physical media and all that sort of stuff, you know the drill guys. Please subscribe. Go and subscribe to Tony as well. Subscribe to John, to Elliot, to Phil. And most importantly, above everything else, folks, in this really sort of trying time that we're all finding ourselves in, please continue to stay safe, look after one another and your loved ones, and I will see you again really, really soon. Take care. Cheers.